माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग माइक्रोवेव से रिल्यूड पार्ट टू प्रेरिक्विजिट्स एंड कवरेज सीरीज ऑन माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग लेक्चर नंबर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो माइक्रोवेव सिस्टम्स और सिस्टम्स दट यूज माइक्रोवेव फॉर देर फंक्शनिंग सिस्टम्स में भी कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम्स और दे में भी नॉन कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम दे में भी सिविलियन सिस्टम और दे में भी डिफेंस सिस्टम दे में भी मेडिकल सिस्टम बट मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट माइक्रोवेव सिस्टम इज रडर कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम अंडर माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग वी स्टडी अबाउट डिजाइन एंड एनालिसिस ऑफ वेरियस ऑपोनेंट वेरियस पार्ट वेरियस सब सिस्टम दट गोज इन टू द मेकिंग ऑफ ए माइक्रोवेव सिस्टम टू स्टडी टू अंडरस्टैंड माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग सब्जेक्ट सर्टन प्री रिक्विजिट्स और नेसेसरी सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ बेसिक एंड फंडामेंटल नॉलेज इन सर्टन एरियाज इन सर्टन सब्जेक्ट्स is highly essential apart from introducing those areas which are prerequisites we also consider the coverage and the scope of the subject microwave engineering when it is studied as part of a graduate course work after introduction usually the course work starts with passive components active components sources characterization and also measurements using the bench setup with this small introduction to the project session now let us move into the core session to move further consider prerequisites transmission line theory wave theory wave guide theory this three can be considered as primary prerequisites without this three or any one of this three it is just not possible to have a grip over the subject microwave engineering out of this three first one transmission line theory it can be considered as most important prerequisite then wave theory microwave engineering is about micro waves it is about waves electromagnetic waves naturally it requires a good understanding regarding wave theory then wave guide theory here we are concerned with hollow pipe wave guides most of the components we encounter in micro engineering they are made with wave guides mostly rectangular wave guides their functioning naturally requires a good understanding regarding the functioning of hollow pipe wave guides one can understand one can notice wave guide theory is a combination of transmission line theory and wave theory if he has studied and understood these two theories thoroughly now we ponder some time over the scope and coverage of the subject microwave engineering after introducing microwaves their frequency bands their benefits their applications microwave engineering starts with attenuator these are passive components wave guide junctions junctions are there to divide a power flow into two or more flows they are also used to combine two or more streams of power into one then scattering parameters what are scattering parameters they are used to model microwave circuits to characterize microwave circuits at low frequencies the circuit can be modeled either using z parameters or y parameters or a b c d parameters but these parameters they are not useful at high frequencies like microwaves the new kind of parameters they are devised they are designed to model circuit set microwaves these parameters are called scattering parameters phase shifters waves are traveling waves they are associated with continuous 
phase change along the direction of their propagation. So as it is, there is a phase shift in a traveling wave. Sometimes need arises to have to provide to introduce more phase shift into the wave. Phase shifters are used for that purpose. Ferrite devices use magnetic materials. Magnetic materials whose relative permeability is large, very large. Using ferrites, isolators can be designed, circulators can be designed, gyrators, several other components, microwave components can be designed. Microwave tubes, clistron amplifiers, reflex clistron oscillators, magnetrons, traveling wave tubes. These are all examples for microwave tubes. Microwave tubes are microwave sources. Sources that are able to generate a microwave signal or amplify a microwave signal. Then solid state devices, gun oscillators, gun amplifiers, and oscillators that use impact and trap at diodes. These are all fall under the category of solid state devices. Usually the subject microwave engineering is concluded with one or two chapters on bench measurements. Using a setup called bench, standing wave ratio, frequency, load impedance, Q, etc. are measured at microwave frequencies. The procedures that are followed for measuring these quantities at microwaves, they are explained in these chapters. Now we try to elaborate the prerequisites. To begin with, we consider transmission line theory. Primary and secondary applications of transmission, transmission lines. Primary application is to transfer energy from one point to another point. Secondary applications are there for lines, like in the design of circuit components, like inductor and capacitor, and also in the design of resonant circuit using lines as stubs in load matching. This is another secondary application. Several secondary applications like this exist. We need to have a good understanding into the secondary applications. In fact, more than primary applications is a must. Primary and secondary constants. RLGC are primary constants. Secondary constants are propagation constant and characteristic impedance. Voltage and current profiles. There exists forward wave. There exists reverse wave. In the forward wave, voltage exists, current exists. In the reverse wave, voltage exists, current exists. They vary with the time. They vary along the length of the line. A good understanding regarding the profiles of voltage and current over the line is a must. RC stands for reflection quotient. Standing wave ratio stands for standing wave ratio. When it comes to microwaves, standing wave ratio is more important than reflection quotient. Microwaves at these frequencies, lines are lossless. SWR assumes prominence over reflection quotient. Then standing wave pattern. When line is terminated over a mismatched load, reflection takes place. Now there are two waves over the line, forward wave and reverse wave. Due to interference between these two, standing wave pattern comes into being. By, stand, by studying the standing wave pattern, one is able to understand so many things regarding line, regarding load, and regarding line-load combination. Load matching is a technique by which one can eliminate the presence of reflected wave over the line, at least a major portion of the line. This technique involves making the terminating impedance equal to characteristic impedance. Smith chart is a tool. It is a tool widely used in solving various transmission line theory problems. Second prerequisite is wave theory. Here we give certain areas 
of wave theory which cannot be neglected if one wants to have a grip over microwave engineering. One must be thorough with Maxwell's equations. These are four in number. They describe dynamic fields. Boundary conditions. The fields at the boundary of two different media are related to each other. The relations are expressed in four statements. These statements are called boundary conditions. They are in terms of tangential components and normal components. Wave equations. Dynamic fields obey wave equations. It implies in dynamic fields there exists electromagnetic wave. A good knowledge of wave equations is a must to understand microwave engineering. Different types of EM waves are there. They can be divided into TEM non-TEM waves. TEM wave exists in space. It also exists in coaxial lines. Whereas non-TEM waves, they exist in wave guides, rectangular wave guides, circular wave guides, which are used quite frequently in the design of microwave engineering systems. Waves carry power. They also contain energy. Power and energy in the waves, they are related to field intensities. Those relations we use several times in microwave engineering. Polarization refers to wave polarization. That is orientation of electric vector in electromagnetic wave. In coupling a signal, to your waveguide or taking out a signal from the waveguide. Polarization. Knowledge regarding polarization of the wave plays an important role. Reflection and refraction. They are associated with the wave phenomena. They are associated with electromagnetic waves too. These two phenomena, they obey Snell's laws. The speciality of reflection and refraction in wave theory is they are considered, they are analyzed by considering polarization, by taking orientation of electric vector into account. It makes the things slightly complex or complicated. Waveguide theory, third prerequisite. Waveguide theory is a combination of transmission line theory and wave theory. Once we have a thorough or deep understanding in those two areas, waveguide theory becomes quite a, an easy or simple thing to understand. Rectangular waveguides, circular waveguides. If the cross-sectional area is rectangle, then the waveguide is called rectangular waveguide. If it is circle, they are called circular waveguides. These waveguides are similar to high pass filters in their behavior. So they exhibit filter characteristics. High pass filter characteristics. They are associated with certain cutoff frequency, cutoff wavelength. These frequency and wavelengths, their values, they are dependent upon the dimensions and also mode of the wave that is traveling through them. Wave travels with a certain or specific structure in waveguides. This structure is called mode. Several modes are possible, but out of them, most important mode is, or most important structure is dominant mode. Waveguides are associated with two types of impedances. One is characteristic impedance, another is waveguide impedance. Their meaning, their concept, their idea is essential to have a fruitful understanding of the subject microwave engineer. Waveguides carry power, not unlimited amount of power. There is a limit. The limit depends upon dimensions of the guide. While designing waveguides, one has to keep this particular aspect in mind. While carrying signal, the waveguides they inflict certain amount of attenuation over the 
signal, dielectric attenuation, conductor attenuation. These are components of the attenuation. The signal undergo while it is traveling through the waveguide. Reflective attenuation is also there, but it happens when the signal is outside the waveguide. Now we move to a discussion on the scope of the subject microengineering or the coverage of the subject microengineering or various aspects that are studied that are taught in the subject microwave engineering. As already mentioned, after introducing microwaves, their applications, their benefits, the study starts with passive components. Attenuators, waveguide junctions, these are all examples for passive components. Under attenuators, resistive card attenuator, fixed and variable attenuator, rotary vane attenuator. These are covered, these are introduced. Attenuators play an important role in the design of communication engineering systems. The functioning of attenuators is inverse to that of amplifiers. Amplifiers are used to enhance the signal, whereas attenuators are used to reduce the signal strength. At low frequencies, at high frequencies, attenuators are used as much as amplifier circuits, but at high frequencies, microwave frequencies, use of attenuators is more when compared to their use at low frequencies. They are more visible than amplifiers at microwaves. Then waveguide junctions. Broadly, they can be divided into two, three-port junctions, four-port junctions. E plane T, H plane T. These two fall in the category of three-port junctions. Magic T, rat race, directional coupler. They belong to the category of four-port junctions. Then what are waveguide junctions or microwave junctions? Microwave junctions, they are used to divide a microwave power stream into two streams, two flows or more flows, two or more flows. They can also be used to combine two or more power streams into one. They have certain special importance or significance in microwave engineering, both in the design as well as in the operation. Characterization is a must, either at low frequencies or at high frequencies. Characterization of a circuit, characterization of a device refers to description of its behavior with mathematical equations in analytical form. At low frequencies, Z parameters, Y parameters, etc., they are available, they can be used, they are being used. But when it comes to high frequencies, they become useless, they are not used. In their place, another set of parameters called scattering parameters, they are used. When a device or circuit is characterized, a matrix comes into being. This matrix is called scattering matrix when scattering parameters are used for characterization. Another area, another set of components that are studied in microengineering is about phase shifters. Traveling waves, they are associated with a certain amount of phase change. We come across requirement where some more extra amount of phase is needed to be introduced into the wave. Phase shifters are useful for that purpose. They add some extra phase into the wave. In addition to the phase shift, the wave is already undergoing. Several varieties of phase shifters are there. Hybrid phase shifters, rotary phase shifters, ferrite phase shifters, fixed phase shifters. All these varieties of phase shifters are added. Ferrite materials are studied in microwave engineering. These materials go into the design of microwave components like phase shifters, isolators, circulators, gyrators, etc. Then what are ferrite materials? These are magnetic materials having mu or relative permeability, a large value. They are similar to ferromagnetic material. 
These materials are associated with the Faraday rotation, gyromagnetic resonance. Faraday rotation refers to change in the orientation of electric vector in the wave. Gyromagnetic resonance is the phenomena that happens between signal and the rotating electrons in the medium. Isolators, circulators, gyrators. These devices, their design uses ferrite materials. So they can be considered, they can be grouped under ferrite microwave devices. Cavity resonators. What is the resonator? Resonator is a device which holds the phenomenon of resonance. Resonators take the shape of a parallel LC circuit at low frequencies. But at high frequencies like microwaves, cavities act as resonators. Resonators, they have some special importance or significance as they are part of oscillators, as they are part of amplifiers, both at low frequencies as well as high frequencies. Of course, at low frequencies, parallel LC or series LC can be used at microwaves, cavities are used, but they are essential parts in the design of oscillators and amplifiers. Cavity resonators can be broadly divided into two, regular and irregular. If the shape is regular, like a cylinder or a sphere, then they are regular, otherwise irregular. There exists also another division, non reentrant and reentrant. The cavities usually enclose certain space, certain volume. One can say cavity is a metallic wall enclosing certain volume. If this wall enters into the volume, then it is called re-entrant cavity. If it doesn't enter, then it is a non-re-entrant cavity. Re-entrant cavities are used in the design of microwave tubes. Microwave tubes are sources, microwave sources. Some are amplifiers, some are oscillators. Clistron amplifiers, these are amplifiers. Reflex clistron oscillators, these are oscillators. Cavity magnetrons, these are oscillators. TWTs, these are amplifiers. TWT stands for traveling wave tube. Amplifiers take a signal, enhance its amplitude and gives out the lengthened signal. In all the stages, the signal frequency falls in microwave band as far as clistron amplifiers are concerned or TWTs are concerned. Reflex clistron oscillators, cavity magnetron oscillators, they simply supply a microwave signal. They don't take any signal input. Gun diodes, impact diodes, rapid diodes, these are used in the design of microwave amplifiers and oscillators. In earlier days, Tubes were in use as sources, but slowly their place is taken over by semiconductor sources, solid state sources. Solid state amplifiers and oscillators use gun diodes, impact trapped diodes. The underlying principle of the diodes and the devices that are mentioned here is one, only one that is generation of dynamic negative resistance. Positive resistance means dissipation. Negative resistance implies generation. Usually, the study of microwave engineering concludes with a chapter on measurements. Measurement of quantities like frequency, VSWR, impedance, power, attenuation, Q, etc. Measurement of these quantities at microwaves. We may need to measure these quantities at lower frequencies too, but the techniques that are used to measure, the setup that is used to measure these quantities at low frequencies, they are not at all useful when the frequency is in the microwave band. A special, a new setup is required. It is called bench setup. This bench setup helps us in measuring frequency, VSWR, attenuation, Q, etc. 
at microwave frequencies. The quantities that are possible to measure, they are all listed here. Frequency, PSWR, impedance, power, attenuation, Q, Q stands for quality factor. DC, directional coupler characteristic measurement, test parameter of a device. Like let us say, E plane T, H plane T. All these things can be measured with H. Various procedures, various methodologies, various techniques that are followed to measure these quantities, they are all described, discussed, and introduced under bench measurements. This is what I want to share with you for now. The main areas that are considered in the present session are prerequisites to the subject microwave engineering and scope or coverage of the subject microwave engineering. Hope you have beautiful and successful, fruitful and rich learning experience. See you again. Bye-bye.